my question is, uh, Robert says, is about whether a genuine born again believer can actually lose their salvation. I know I am secure in my relationship with the Lord and I make mistakes, but I repent and run back. I understand much scripture like I see throughout Hebrews and from Jesus himself that talk about falling away from God's mercy and grace. But is this the same as losing your salvation? Just wanting to see what you guys think. Thanks and God bless. The whole losing your salvation uh, debate. Yeah, the, the most straightforward way we answer this is I believe in the eternal security of those who abide <laughs> in a living relationship with Jesus Christ. And I also believe in the eternal insecurity of those who don't. Mm. To, Thank you, Chuck Smith. Yeah, to turn that off, the essential point of it is basically understanding he who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son does not have life, yeah. but the wrath of God abides on him. It's not just there, it's comfortable there. So when we're reading John chapter 3, and by the way, it's not 316, that's that quote that I gave you, that's in the later verses. The point of emphasis that John the Baptist was making was understanding just that. It's an either or Jesus or bust situation. Mm -hmm. When we understand the security of our salvation, it's going to be directly proportionate to how sufficient we believe that his work on the cross was. If you come from a background that's really insecure about those sort of things, that you and again, I don't say this trying to be chagrin. I have conversations with these kinds of people who read the Bible for the express purpose of talking themselves into a state of being condemned by God. Uh, there's yeah. ultimately going to be passages that you can rip out, like you mentioned in Hebrews, and say that regardless of the fact that it says it is impossible to redeem those who are once called, who have tasted the heavenly gift, seen the, the sign of the age to come, to renew them again to a spirit of repentance, that is a pretty final term. It's the same term used when it says that it is impossible for God to lie, to violate his own nature. So if we go to the scripture with the goal of wanting to solidify ourselves in our insecurity, then it's going to be just about as much the same productivity as us going to scripture in order to find justification for Jew hatred or justification for a uh, you know, complete absence of anything future in terms of the end times or complete fill in the blank as to your pet doctrine, Nephilim if you want. It's all coming down to this idea of what is what in fancy seminary terms the fundamentals of soteriology, the study of salvation, and it's this. Do you have Jesus? Okay, how did you acquire him? That, mm -hmm. that's, that's another fun way I try to address the question. I think I lost my salvation, or where'd you put it last? Mm -hmm. Right, the most unhelpful and yet profound statement you can ask about this topic. <laughs> because why? If you have Jesus, if what he did for you was enough, then that puts into perspective all the other passages that note it wasn't enough. If Paul, for example, makes the observation, I fulfill in my flesh what is lacking in the work of Christ, people say, oh, so that's saying that the work of the cross isn't sufficient. You have to observe church rituals. You have to be a yeah. church membership at this specific location with this specific kind of architecture, with this specific kind of sacraments and so forth you're going to miss a lot of points. But upon the other hand, you'd say, okay, what is my groundwork? God is the only one who could save me. God wanted to save me. Mm -hmm. God did save me. Yep. Okay, God, the creator of the universe, the only being whose existence is sufficient in of itself, the one who spoke into creation without a word, the one who entered into that creation, lived a life none of us ever could, and then laid that life down in a system that he had been setting up since Eden and beforehand, if you read Revelation 13, then you go, I think he's going to see this through. Yeah. I think when Paul said, he who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete until the day of Christ Jesus, I have a lot of security. On the other stat, people who take their salvation for granted, who aren't regarding Jesus, who are regarding themselves and saying, I'm basically good enough. I did the whole God thing. I prayed the prayer. But you wouldn't know Jesus from a can of oatmeal. Mm -hmm. Then you are in a definite can position oatmeal? where you... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Does oatmeal come in cans? I don't know. 
We'll, we'll that. anything that'll be our next bible question anything yeah. is possible if you try hard enough <laughs> but <laughs> boiling water can contain in there but the point being made is just that you can talk yourself out of anything or talk yourself into anything and be deceived so the question isn't necessarily where you think you are because this is another important phrase we use to answer this question if you had lost your salvation you wouldn't care because the holy spirit's the only one that makes that even a thing the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, what we call that sealing of promise, Ephesians 1, I think, is where that's mentioned, yeah. Is, yeah, is where we ultimately take this away from. So when it comes to what we need to know mm -hmm. about our salvation, what, what's Soteriology 101 all about? If I have Jesus, I'm secure. Can I justify that scripturally? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, first of all, you're saved by grace and not by your works, Ephesians chapter 2, 8, 9. So I, I can't mean, be unsaved by my yeah, works? Yeah, so it's like if you're not you, saved by your work, then obviously you can't be unsaved by it. <laughs> you who were made perfect by the Spirit are now being made <clears throat> imperfect by the flesh. Yeah, so the book of Galatians was written uh, to really combat the idea that um, your work somehow keeps you saved. Um, and, and that's why, and Paul has some very hardcore words. Um, you know... Uh, let me just go over some passages with uh, the person. What's their names? Robert. Rob. Uh, this is Robert. Okay. Yeah, Robert. Then yeah. Yeah. So we might be familiar with John chapter ten, where Jesus says, "Hey, my sheep, listen to my voice." This is in verse twenty-seven, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. So. Whoever uh, the father brings to the son is obviously in a secure place. Um, that's for sure. Mm. So whoever the, the father brings to the son, right? Jesus says, my father who has given me, given them to me, it says, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my father's hand. I and the father, you got two hands, you know, holding <laughs> you, you know. Now, we see in the book of Acts that a person named Lydia in Acts 16 it says in verse 14, uh, it talks about her occupation, but then it says the Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. So when a person responds to the gospel of Jesus Christ in an affirmative, that is a work of God opening up their heart yep. to respond to the message. Yep. You cannot respond to the message of, of Jesus Christ in the affirmative apart from the work of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 12, 3. Right, which says no one can say Jesus is Lord without the Spirit. Yep. And if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart God has raised him from the dead, you will be... Saved. Not Ch started to that, get saved? No, oh. that's Romans chapter 10. And then now, you know, we see Colossians, we see passages like this in Colossians chapter 1, where it says, verse 21, um, once you were alienated from God, you were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. If you continue in your faith, established and firm, not moved from the hope held out in the gospel, this is the gospel that you heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven of which I, Paul, am a servant. And so people read these passages and and, uh, of Paul that kind of stressed this idea of if you continue in this hope, the hope of what? The gospel of Jesus mm. Christ. And would we say, is there a place for these kind of warnings to the church? Yeah, absolutely. And we see this in Paul's writing. We see this in Jesus's writing to the church. Um, you know, these very strong warnings to continue in the faith. Um, the book of, uh, and so we would affirm too that it's important to have these admonishments in the scriptures yeah. to continue. And we would also um, point out that in the book of uh, 1 John, I think it might be, it might be the, the epistle of 2 John, where, uh, but it might be 1 John, where it says uh, that uh, those in the church in Ephesus that, that John is writing. Uh, went out from among them. Yeah, Second John. And is it Second John? Or, oh, and the spirit of Antichrist. They went out from us because they were not of they us. They were not of us. That point's repeated when it references that uh, 
interesting character Dionogies. Yeah, yeah, but it's talking about people that went out from the church, and Paul and John recognizes that they did go out of the church. They left the church, but John says they weren't with us to begin with. Hmm. So obviously John's saying that they weren't part of, they did not receive the gospel, you know, and they hung uh, out with people who did. They hung out with people who did, but it didn't mean they hmm. were. So, you know, uh, do we believe in the security of people that uh, their hearts have been open to the, the gospel of Jesus Christ? Absolutely, we do. Do we believe that uh, there is uh, um, places in the New Testament for strong warnings to those, for those to continue in their faith? Absolutely. Yep. Um, but salvation is by grace and uh, mm-hmm. you know so we have to remember that yeah. you know it's not by works of righteousness titus chapter 3 says that right so right. anyway yeah and as someone i tend to be on the more you know insecure side of things i always have to remind myself that you know if if i died to have a relationship with you how invested am i in that relationship <laughs> right, you know right, what i mean right. like oh okay yeah he definitely did what it took to have and how much more would he complete that work like you said you know well yeah. 